Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Grand Tactician, The Civil War. Uh, this is our Union Let's Play series of this new strategy and war game, which recently exited early access to its 1.0 release. And in this series, we have reached January of 1862. The Union holds Northern Virginia pretty firmly. We've liberated West Virginia from the rebels, and they do have an army sort of in the, in the mountains there in the eastern portion of the state, but we have an overwhelming force under General Don Carlos Buell that'll move east soon to kick them out once the season uh, sort of allows for it. We have a couple of armies in Kentucky ready to begin the campaign south into Tennessee, against, again, once the weather allows for it. And we have a pretty good position in Missouri. We've also taken one port on the Atlantic coast, um, that being at Fort Macon. We've begun repairing that port up to about 30%, and we've also taken Moorhead, uh, which is the port there. We have issued some orders for some of our naval vessels between episodes. So we have a fleet of about eight ships and 160 guns with 124 firepower. We are giving them orders uh, to patrol because the Confederates apparently have some raiding squadrons out that are doing very light blockade work. So I want to try and break that. And then I also am sending the bulk of our Atlantic blockading squadron here with 14 ships and 659 guns, most of those in 74 gun sail ships of the line to New York where they are going to rest and refit. Once they are done refitting, I think we're going to take those almost six, well, not 700, but 650 guns down toward Norfolk where we're going to try and destroy the port there, or, or not the port, but the, um, the fort there, and then maybe land a force at Norfolk to try and kick some of these uh, Confederate naval forces out. We also have 10,000 men in a coastal army which will presumably support that operation. Alternatively, we could send them to the Gulf and try and go for New Orleans, but we'll see. Um, we're probably at least a week or two in game away from that occurring. Right now, we're really just kind of waiting out the winter, though. It's the uh, it's the winter season, so it is. Um, our troops are in winter quarters. And so we have fought a couple of battles against the Confederates as they've sort of prodded our positions, uh, but mostly we're just kind of waiting at the moment for uh, for the seasons to change. Uh, glorious victory at Wilmington. So. All right. So it looks like the enemy, there was an enemy fleet down here, which is sailing away. I don't think we sank anything, but I do think we may have lifted the blockade. No, we didn't even lift the blockade on any of these. any of these boys but anyway we're patrolling off the confederate coast and then is this squadron refitting that's the goal i don't know if i have to like transition them back to uh if i have to transition them back to port for them to actually refit or not we'll give them a few days and see So you can see our flying flotilla here is patrolling back and forth. Also, Fort Macon now acts as a port where my uh, ships can re-coal and re-arm. So that's nice. It's kind of, we're kind of using it as, as Port Royal historically was used early in the war to support the blockades of the eastern uh, coastline. Port Royal being one of the best po natural ports on the eastern seaboard. Interestingly enough, no major city around there. Uh, the Confederates have improved their credit rating and uh, supported funding level one. So basically, they're going to have some inflation, but it does give them more cash. We are currently researching military level two, but we're about 27 days away from anything happening there. Looks like their James River Squadron has withdrawn down to uh, Fort Sumter. Apparently the blockades are not being lifted. Meanwhile, we're into the middle of January. No sign of Confederate armies on the move. Everybody's sort of hunkered down for the winter. Well, have a good one, Mr. Steiner. We keep issuing bonds. Our, our, our treasury, our debt situation is not good. 
I'm not really managing the finances myself, though, which may... I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Like, I don't know how bad the AI is at managing your economy. I'm really not sure. I need to probably do some, some digging and finding out, like, does it, does it make sense to have the AI auto-manage that? Because that's what I've been doing. So we're about 20 days into this the stream if you will and no uh, no confederate movement here. They're respecting the winter. It's still nice and cold out. So we're just kind of waiting and then I think we're going to have a very active spring of 1862 once the weather clears and we can start campaigning. Pumping engine beam fractured. Trap men dead. Two shafts required. The dead are brought up. Coal mining accident in England. Hartley Colliery disaster. I don't care about that. What do I care about that? Does it influence the price of cotton or, or coal? I don't know. Meanwhile, we are up to 186,000 men in arms. The Confederates have about half of that, according to our intelligence. McClellan is up to just shy of 40,000 men, and he's got another 5,300 that are wounded, so some of those will gradually filter in to our army. And then the Department of Pennsylvania has recruited all of its troops. It's got about 24,000 men. Buell has just shy of 40,000 men at 37,000 men in West Virginia. Grant has about 20,000 men in the Army of the Cumberland, and Sumner has about 30,000 men in the Army of Kentucky. Missouri State Guard hanging out there with 8,500 troops. William Harney has about 8,200. Let's go ahead and pause here and raise some more troops here. So we should really form, I think, a second division in this army in Missouri. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, the second division, I guess, will be under... Actually, we should use Sylvester Churchill. He's a brigadier general who fought in a battle and was pretty well regarded before he was wounded and removed from command. So we'll give him command of the new division. And uh, we'll go ahead and raise, I think, probably just two brigades of troops. I don't want it to be like an overwhelming number of troops to try and support in Missouri. So we can go ahead with an Indiana brigade. We'll do 2,200 troops. And we'll give them the, the nice sky blue jackets. And then we'll go ahead and recruit a second brigade. Um, Tennessee troops, their morale would not be very high. Pennsylvania, actually, their support is only 89%. That's surprisingly low. We'll go with... Who has, like, no troops fielded? New Jersey only has 91 men fielded. They've got 8,000 volunteers. It'll take them longer to show up, probably, because they're further west. Or New Jersey's east, but the soldiers here are west. But that's fine. 35 days for those troops, yep. And then we'll go ahead and recruit a new battery of artillery... We'll do a Minnesota Minnesota unit. Go ahead and upgrade these guys from mixed muskets. What are the other units in this force using? Enfield, Enfield. Okay, so we'll just keep it consistent, and we'll go with Enfield rifled muskets from England. We've got 13 of those in stock. We have more Springfield rifles, by the looks of it, that just came online. We'll go with a 12... Let's... Hmm... 12-pound Napoleons or 3-inch Ord rifles. We'll probably be on the offensive, I think, I hope. Let's go 3-inch Ord. And then these 12-pound Napoleons. So we'll have one Napoleon, one 3-inch Ordnance rifle unit. And what's the Manyard carbine? It's a very accurate weapon. We'll keep that as is. Meanwhile, the... Brigade commanders, I don't know who any of these guys are. Like, are they actually good historical commanders? I don't know. William French, I know who he was. He was pretty bad, but we'll give him a command. George Taylor, I don't know who that was, but he has two battle experience stars, so we'll leave him in charge. Okay. Uh, Captain, I would like to play War in the Pacific. Some things have come up with the game. I've been working through them. Um, maybe a new opponent, but we'll see. Um, but uh, there's some details that are being worked through. It'll probably be a few more weeks, but the series will not die. I will, I will, per I will persevere. I'm just not sure what uh, 
what exactly when that'll be. Okay. Oh, would a cavalry army, would it move around faster? I don't know. That's a good question. If we form just like a cavalry corps, we could potentially form a cavalry corps once we get that uh, next policy done. We're 10 days away from military two, and at that point, we'll be able to form army corps. So let's also take a look at Grant's army. He's got two divisions. He's got about 20,000 men. I'm kind of tempted to raise one more division in his force, although that'll kind of make like all of our armies the same size. And I don't know that we need 30,000 men invading eastern Tennessee, so... I mean, I'm already so much in uh, in the red finances wise. How are our uh, big ass ironclads doing? Forty two percent completed. I really need those guys so I can try and clear the river. From what I've heard, naval combat in this game is largely borked, so that sucks. But all right, let's actually go take a look at these ships in New York. Yeah, these guys don't look like they're actually getting any. Oh no, they are slowly. So they are repairing. Oh, the iron, the monitor is back or back. The monitor is ready. USS monitor. We'll add her to the Atlantic blockading squadron. Not sure that's smart or not. She's not really a uh, ocean going vessel. The battle hymn of the Republic. And we're going to have a battle. The Army of Tennessee? <laughs> okay. So we're going to have a battle in February of 1862. And it looks like Felix Zollkoffer and his 21,000 men have marched north to face General George B. McClellan and his 39,000 troops, presumably at Manassas, the Army of the Tennessee. No additional rebel troops flanking. So I guess we're going to have a battle here. We outnumber the enemy almost two to one. By some strange operation of magic, I seem to have become the power of the land. All right, we're on the defensive. 22,000. I mean, the, the enemy's going to have no chance here. They should not have marched north here. Uh, McLean, Ford, and Blackburn are the objectives here. It says we're on the defensive, so presumably the Rebs... Wait, why do I have perfect line of sight into where they are? We can see them. I've never seen that before. They have a lot of artillery, though, by the looks of it. Um, is there like an intelligence reason that we can see them? I mean, we've got 46 intelligence gatherings, so I guess maybe that's why. Okay. Um, so how far can I deploy troops out? So the enemy's over here. The objectives are down this way. But I kind of would rather fight them. I, mean, I don't want to wait all day for them to come up. Are there any good spots to fight them? Maybe this tree line here? It's a nice little ridge, I think. Actually, it's a, it's a gully. There's heights on either side. We could fight them behind this. They could be in the trees, but they'd have to come out across the open to face us. Use some of these fence lines on the defensive. Use this. That's a nice long fence. It goes like the whole damn length. Yeah, we're going to do that. All right, Buford, you're going to deploy your troops... We'll probably come down this main thoroughfare here down the Warrentown Turnpike. So 
So I think we'll deploy guns up here. I think these are heights. Buford's cavalry might actually be useful this time because they have actual guns. Like, no longer the craptastic stuff. So the enemy will probably march down the Warrentown Turnpike. We can hold on Henry Hill. Yeah, that's a good spot. Let's go ahead and place our artillery up this way. The artillery reserve under Henry Hunt. Three inch ord rifles. We're going to deploy the Napoleons a little bit further forward over here. I think they'll still be able to see the enemy coming up this way. All right, these are 24 pound howitzers, 12 pound howitzers of the field guns, the three inch ord rifles. And more three-inch short rifles. So we're banking that they're going to come up this main road, essentially, so that we can clobber them as they come up. If they do move, like, down this way, may not be as great a situation. These two, okay, so we've got, I think, a pretty good defensive position there for the artillery. Hunter's division... Let's give you a single line. Why are they not? Deploy further forward, jerks. Why are they deployed all the way back there? Is that the... Oh, there's the line right there. Okay. I didn't realize it bent quite like that. All right, we'll put these guys here, I think. We've got a fair amount of engineering points also. God damn it. There you go. Okay. Leave those guys in the woods. What are these? These guys are all sporting Springfield rifled muskets. Stay in that uh, tree line there for his division. Runyon's division will deploy a little bit further north on this angle. Let's give his boys some trenches too. Cutting, our, cutting a... a line through that roadway there. It's World War One, boys. Trenches everywhere. Oops. Okay. I'm going to want to deploy these guys a little bit over here like this. 
But I don't know that I can do that. I don't think I can dig the trenches there because of... Yeah. I would like to have the... I mean, the heights should be good enough, so I guess we'll just... Hmm. All right. Okay. We've got a little bit of a salient here in the woods. But I think we've got enough engineering points to... Take care of these boys. Okay, so we've got second division here. And then third division's over here. We've got the cavalry boys a little bit further north. Sort of guarding this side. I'm, I'm not too worried about the enemy going up that way. I don't think it's terribly likely. But we'll guard it anyway, just with the cavalry. Wolfpack, thanks for the gift subs. Appreciate the support. Good to see you tonight, sir. Are you going to be streaming later? That's what, two divisions are in place. Wolves division, I think, will place along this roadway here further south. Along this fence line. Yeah, we still have quite a bit of engineering points. We have a remarkable amount of engineering points. I am assuming the reason we have so many engineering points has something to do with the fact that we've been in winter quarters for a while. Okay, so this division is in place now as well. We'll keep these boys behind this fence. And I think that'll be the, the extent of our flank down here. I don't think there's too much risk of them moving further south there. I like how we've got this one little salient here. That feels authentic. And then we'll have one more division back here under Shank. Who's sort of been our shock division in the past. I'm going to put him on the reverse slope over here. In marching columns, I think. And Shank is going to be sort of our fire brigade, if you will. He's on the reverse slope, so he should be safe from enemy fire. And if the enemy does move down this roadway, as I think is likely... Well, I guess I should... The problem is I don't have the ability to deploy the troops where I want them to, but I guess we could just move Shank up here and have him go into position. They just won't be able to be dug in. But they should really extend to this creek to block that road. And then we'll move McClellan up. Watch me hit the wrong button and have everything redeploy. All right, let's move ahead to when we spot the enemy. All right, any sign of the, the rebs yet? Oh, shit, there they are. Oh, they're going for my left. I thought they were going to come down this roadway. But we can see at least McClaw's division is coming up to the left. We do have troops. Oh, no, they're coming all the way around my lines. All right, pause. They're coming down this roadway here. Okay. 
They're also coming up the main roadway. Well, shit. I can't be everywhere at once. Um... Well, my artillery is definitely out of position, at least for a big chunk of this upcoming battle. Buford, go ahead and deploy your troops. Refuse the flank. You're going to fight dismounted. You have better weapons now, so hopefully you guys do better. It's very different than Ultimate General, Ivan. Ultimate General, I would say, is a better tactical game than this, but I would say this as an actual strategic element, which Ultimate General doesn't have. Other than just the army management. Alright, so some enemy skirmishers formed up. My artillery is apparently able to see them, so at least my, my left flank battery, the second bat, 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 battery of artillery, and the first battery, both are firing. I don't know that I want you guys to go that way. Ashby advanced and then pulled his troops back like he found the open flank and isn't moving into position to exploit it, I guess. That's interesting. So a little bit of artillery dueling going on, repositioning now that the enemy's stumbled into our lines. I will say, though, like, not exploiting an open flank is pretty realistic. A lot of times, uh, units really didn't know what they were running into, what they saw, what the situation was. But it looks like Wool and Hunter's divisions are probably going to be doing the bulk of the fighting here. We may redeploy Shank, but I don't want to leave this roadway open yet. Old Jude, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Appreciate the support. Oh, Manning, it looks like two brigades are trying to come up on around my flank. Where are you going? You're going to ride past him so you can ride back around. Okay. Oh, shit. We've opened fire. The enemy brought Anderson's battalion of guns forward here to point-blank range to, to fight against Innis Palmer's brigade of troops in, in basically trenches here. Good luck with that, AI. I'm going to guess they didn't know we were there. This is such a pretty line. It would be such a shame to abandon it. All right, first Vermont, you're in reserve, so why don't you head south? There's no reason for you to stay back there. I don't need you over there. There's three brigades stacking up on my flank. Let's get you guys on this trench. And dismounted. Or not trench on this um, fence line. So we're going to move stone and porter along this fence line. Where's the other artillery or the other. Bring these guns over here too. deploy most of my artillery. Where's my other cavalry brigade? We got the first mass on the first Pennsylvania in position Buford but where's your other one don't you have three oh he's back here okay so we're putting 2200 troops with Burnside carbines and another 2200 troops so we've got about 4200 soldiers that are going to be dismounted Burnside's carbines we can get another 2,200 troops over here. All told, it'll be about 6,000 cavalrymen. We're shifting our artillery south here, and the enemy, again, has a division firmly on our flank. We did drive back the one battery of enemy artillery. Not all the units have perks. 
So these guys don't have the experience. None of those cavalry units do. None of these infantry units so far do. These guys do have perks. So sharpshooter one for Erasmus Keys' unit. Iron Discipline for the first New York under Andrew Porter. Iron Discipline for the first Pennsylvania. So we do have the units. It looks like Hooker's Brigade's the one one that we hadn't really assigned a perk yet. We'll give him Deadly Volley. Deadly Volley is trained to vigorously maintain fire discipline, releasing their volley only when the effect is assured. Resistance to high momentary casualties by 50%. Volley strength by five. The enemy's moving. Oh, these are detachments. I was going to say, are they moving two more brigades this way? Because fuck. There's four abandoned enemy guns. Let me go take those things. We're going to send 60 troops from Palmer's unit out to go take those enemy guns, fire into the flank of the enemy advance. All right, one of the first Vermont has arrived. So we're going to extend our line with infantry. We'll move Gibbs back into a kind of a reserve position. Buford has been defamed in previous battles, so. All right, so one of these batteries can see. 12 pound Napoleons can fire on the enemy here. That's a lot of Haas accounts. Dude, are you a bot? Can you like chill with all the like spam following? I appreciate the following, but I don't need like 20 spam accounts colorization is is down low to keep the map feel maybe um also keep in mind it is winter so the ground is is not vibrant or alive it's mostly sort of dead all right we've got two more brigades coming up this way so the enemy's still deploying Great. That's awesome. Okay. These guys only have partial protection. Can we dig in some... Give these guys some breastworks. Rather. Let's give these guys some breastworks too. That is a lot of artillery firing. So both of these batteries are firing now. We've got 15 Napoleons and 15 12 pound howitzers both blasting the enemy from that little gap in the line. And then we've got our detachment of troops up here. Can they move these guns? Because you're going to get your ass kicked if you stay up here all by yourself. Oh, are there 60 mana on just one gun? Do they not take the whole battery? Oh, whatever. Okay, I've got other artillery coming up too, don't I? Yeah. 
But this battery over here, these 24 pound howitzers can fire into the flank of anybody going after this position. And we've also got these three inch, inch ordnance rifles, which do they redeploy? Because they seem like they're in a slightly worse position. But I don't remember ordering them up. Oh no, it's just because the my orientation on the battlefield shifted. All right. Well, the enemy's waiting to attack still. We only withdrew one of those guns. Blasted. Come on, boys. Run fast. No, it says we have four guns. It's just they must have had a 16-gun battery. And they're going to drop some skirmishers to shoot behind us, I guess. Oof, we lost 13 men there. None of the guns, though. They're still moving. Meanwhile, Ennis Palmer's brigade here is going to fire into these guys as they get chased at. Looks like John Sedgwick's brigade is going to get into action here. I think this is their first battle, actually. So they lost 16 men, but they didn't lose. They lost 16 men in one of the guns. What are they? Six pound field guns? Yeah. Rest of the enemy isn't attacking yet. Is this it? Is, is my whole right wing not going to be engaged? All right, let's bring Hooker's Brigade down also. So I'm slowly redeploying Shank's Brigade, which was on our, our division, which was on our right flank. We'll keep the first Ohio and Burnsides in place, sort of astride the road, just in case they come up that roadway. Meanwhile, shifting our troops further south. Gray's Brigade, which I, I think was moving forward really just with the in, the anticipation of taking out those guns, is engaged against Colonel Ennis Palmer. Ennis Palmer, by the way, one of our best brigade commanders right now in terms of stats. Although, I think he's commanding a fresh group of troops in this battle. It's like their first battle. They're fighting against McRae, inflicting considerably higher casualties than they're taking. And I don't think my artillery can fire on anybody at the moment. Right, they're still digging their trenches over here. should be in good cover now. I'm going to need a brigade behind Palmer's just in case. Warren can support, but his troops are also green. So we'll move, I think we'll move Hooker in behind. Well, he's already moving roughly to the right spot, I think. Just chilling there. You're supposed to move behind those. Move your guns a little bit. And you don't have a field of fire on McRae. So really just one brigade battling it out here. The first brigade under Innes Palmer versus McRae's brigade. The Army of the Tennessee. Enemy artillery fire is pounding the 1st New York, inflicting a few casualties on Porter's Brigade. Not, my, not many. Some of these guns have really good line of sight here. Henry Hill, great for these 3-inch ordnance batteries. You can kind of see why the first battle of Bull Run centered around Henry... Henry, was it Henry Hunt and House Hill? Those two hills? Henry Hill and there's another hill. Ball Hill? I thought it was like House. Could be wrong. Where are these boys going? What are you guys doing? Why? What kind of pathfinding is that? 
Let's lose a battery of 24 pound howitzers because you're dumb. Good job, AI. Save the guns. Melee. That might have been dumb. We do outnumber them three to one. I just ordered these troops. You can't really see because of the trees. But I ordered them to fix bayonets and charge. The artillery just got rocked. Like, don't always... I understand AI pathfinding wants to use roads. But sometimes you need to be smarter than that. A's the general, the division commander's moving forward. McGray's brigade is wiped out. Hell yes! We did it, boys. We wiped out an entire enemy brigade. Palmer, you're a freaking hero. We captured 1,700 rebel prisoners. You never capture prisoners in this game. Oh boy. <laughs> Our 24 pound howitzers, though, are, are wrecked. Yes, the Union did lose at Manassas. Very badly. But this is not the historical battle of Manassas. This is based on our alternate campaign. Or not alternate, but based on the game's campaign mechanics, which are different. Okay, so the good news is we just wiped out an entire enemy brigade. Hell yes. But now we just have to sit and wait, I guess, for more troops to come up. They've been really passive in this battle. It's about 1,400 hours. We'll go ahead and speed things up to times 10. Okay, turn your troops face the right direction, please. There you go. All right, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit in the battle to the next day because... Essentially, this, this day's fight just turns into an artillery duel for the rest of the time. And there's no meaningful redeployments overnight. Um, so rather than have you guys just sit here and watch for the next 10 minutes and nothing really happening, um, let's go ahead and move forward. Third Ohio is going to come up here and reserve earth behind this artillery. No, 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 no. Don't you dare go in column. What are you doing in column? Form a damn line, you jerks. All right, so we're going to have two brigades in reserve if the enemy hits us on this front where there is a little bit of a gap. I'm just curious, are they going to come at us? It says we're on the defensive, and our objective is to hold our position. So why aren't they attacking? Come on, Rebs. Come at me. Let me kill you over the open ground. Or do you just want to tickle each other with our artillery? They could form a pretty formidable attack if they concentrate all 20,000 of their troops on these four brigades here. Again, we do have two infantry in reserve and a cavalry brigade in reserve as well. For the moment, we're just spending a lot of artillery ammunition. It looks like we set one of these houses on fire. Remember, we did destroy one rebel brigade earlier. Let's bring the third New York over to... We're shortening our right flank. Abandoning some of these trenches on this roadway. The enemy could take advantage of that, but I don't think they will. So we now have a four brigade reserve of about... 7,000 infantry and 2,000 cavalry. And I guess we're just going to blast away with artillery. Probably spend most of our artillery ammunition. Just 
just blazing away. Well, artillery ammo prices will go up after this. I was taking a look before this battle, and uh, small arms ammo has spiked considerably after a lot of the, the battles and also the raising of some of the fresh troops that we raised. Looks like it's mostly anti-infantry artillery going on here. Don't see much in the way of losses for the gunners. Most of our artillery seems to be firing on Manning's detachment, which is maybe not the best use of ammo. We also have been firing a fair bit of Ector's Brigade. But using artillery on skirmishers is not my idea of efficient practice. Man, it's already... 1300 hours AI hey, are you gonna come at me or not Let's do this. Let's move Harvey Brown's brigade up into this wood line. They're not going to come for me. Maybe I can go for them a little bit. We do outnumber them, so we might as well go on the offensive. Just a small engagement here. Just one brigade. Engage the Tennessee State Militia. We'll also bring up the 2nd New York. Got Springfield rifled muskets. Doesn't look like the enemy can fire at us. And I think they might be glitched because they seem to be marching somewhere. Is there a melee option? Spirited charge. Hell yes. We're gonna have Buchanan charge these guys and try and see if we can destroy another rebel brigade. They're not even shooting back. They're, that's glitched. Feel bad for them. Wasn't war, it was murder. How would I come? Well, actually, you already asked that. Sorry. up a little okay now they're engaging us there you go boys return your fire hey Newhauser, can you do something about that if you're still around Good drub, and I think once we get them down to around 1800 men, I'll issue the order to charge. And then my goal is to wipe another brigade off. They might break before we get them down to 200 or to 1800. 2600 troops. Good training. Good training. These guys have the melee perk. Charge, boys. Charge. The enemy's already fallen back, so their morale's gotta be. gotta be faltering. 
Give me that 10% melee boost. Get in there, boys. See if we can capture that enemy brigade. Shit, they broke us. God damn it. I hope my brigade doesn't surrender. Looks like they're escaping. They didn't even permanently get... Oh, no, they did. Okay, never mind. They only lost 300 men. The enemies lost more than double. And they still didn't break them. Whatever. We'll let the first Pennsylvania whittle those guys down. Meanwhile, the enemy is shifting more troops by the looks of it. Drayton's Brigade and Van Dorn's are, in the, are on the move. These guys are a level 3 experience unit. This brigade's lost almost a thousand men. Where's little Mac? Well, Hunter can do it. Rally, boys. Okay. All right, we broke him. Tennessee State Militia broke after losing about a thousand men. just gonna have to defeat these guys in detail like I want this damn battle to actually be fought so they're bringing they're bringing some troops forward now looks like they're bringing a brigade forward here to go against the second Pennsylvania bring the first down to fire into their flank all these empty trenches also, by the way, apparently, like, broken units that rally gain extra experience between, between days. One second here. Oops. Sorry about that. Why is the AI sending... I've never seen them be quite this interested in piecemeal attacks. Right, so Drayton's brigade. I want to try and destroy another brigade. Of course, I chose the unit with poor melee skills. I ordered the charge. Charge up the hill and over the woods. The Confederate lines we go. I don't know, we defeated that other brigade and forced it to surrender, so now I want to force these guys to surrender. We'll outnumber by 300 men. We'll have troops with level 3 experience. And they're a veteran unit with excellent melee skills. The enemy is probably in their first battle or close to it. 
All right, so we just wrecked. Well, no, that was just his infantry that we're trying to man those guns. So those guns, that wasn't an art artillery unit. All right, so we quickly routed Drayton's brig brigade. We'll see if they surrender or not, like that other brigade did. They don't have a great path to retreat, which could be good for us. Guess we'll see. Hey, Coffee Filter, how you doing? Type 1 Wombat, good to see you. Um, what are the controls that this is most similar to? I, don't know, I, don't, I honestly don't know. They are losing a lot of men, but I don't think it looks like they may be escaping. No, they surrendered. Yes, we got them. Their flag's gone, boys. They've been wiped. Another Confederate brigade destroyed. Nana's the Bard. Good to see you. Yeah, probably similar. So Nelson, first battery of the Confederate Nelsons. Or no, that's our, our Nelson. Has withdrawn. Meanwhile, their flag's gone. So these guys must all be surrendering. Still says we're in melee, but... So we've driven back one Confederate brigade, the Tennessee State Militia. Actually, we've driven back two brigades with over a thousand casualties in this battle, and now we've wiped out two enemy brigades. And the enemy's retreating. They didn't really put up much of a fight, I'm just going to say. So I instead of a major victory because of the casualties inflicted, they're going to withdraw before most of their army engages, which is a little bit annoying. Like, they never even launched a damn attack. So to that extent, advance, boys. Let's go fight these guys. We don't have much time. Throw our whole left wing into the advance. Well, we're going to get about 20 minutes of musketry in before the, the battle ends, but we'll inflict a few casualties on the enemy. There you go. Oh, it's a major victory. It gives us credit for major. The enemy loses 4,200 casualties out of uh, just 1,800 infantry, so better than one-fifth of their infantry and half their artillery destroyed, just shy of one-third of their entire army. We lost about 1,000 men. They lost four times that in infantry. We did lose 16 guns. That was a bit of a gut punch. But uh, Major General George B. McClellan wins a two-day battle uh, at, uh, I guess, is that technically three? February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd? Uh, at Manassas Junction against Major General Felix Zolkoffer, destroying completely two enemy brigades. Let's see what that post-battle report says. Major victory. I think that's our second major victory. Might be third. Our own losses mount 1,100. The enemy lost 7,000 men. Woo. Due to his bad performance in battle, Major J Major Nelson has fallen into disgrace in the eyes of his men and the public. Yeah, I think that's fair. That dude brought his battery of artillery down a road the enemy was on. Not smart. All right, and that's going to do it for another episode of Grand Tactician, the Civil War, our Union Let's Play series. Another major victory against the Confederates. Uh, we actually got to capture a few enemy units. I haven't seen a lot of that in the past, so that was kind of cool. Um, I wish the enemy had been more aggressive and had, like, launched a full frontal assault against us. It seemed like they knew attacking forts were a bad idea, but nonetheless, it would have been interesting uh, as it is, uh, that's another victory and another episode in the books. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.